Hey guys, hope everything's going good. Today I have a little bit of a teaser for you. We're going to be talking about topping the Duolingo charts with Duobot. And I did indeed prototype a buggy Duolingo bot using Selenium. So the takeaway here is Selenium, which is usually used for integration tests for web frameworks and that sort of thing, can also be used for really cool things to make your life easier. So we'll jump into a demo. As you can see here, the bot um, is launched through a shell window right here I'm using Ubuntu on Windows WSL and it launches a Firefox window it will automatically log in I have it so that it will type in your username and password or use cookies if you've already logged in before to prevent logging in over and over and over it will launch a lesson right now I'm on Arabic which the bot knows really well compared to other languages it's one of the newer courses, so the questions are easier than some of the fancy things that they do on the popular ones like Spanish with all the stories and extra features that they have. Arabic is still very bare bones, so it was easy to get started on. And plus, it was what I was interested in at the time. Anyway, you can see as we go through here, it's answering the questions on its own, it's clicking the next button, all that stuff. And it looks pretty impressive on the surface. You think, hey, this bot's really doing some stuff. It even taps all the things in the right order goes through the whole lesson on its own. Of course, this is the most basic lesson there is, alphabet one. Um, but it does get through, and at the end you do get your XP. In this case, I've already done it because it keeps failing out. But if it were your first time doing it that day, you would get 10 XP, maybe even 15. And of course, note that it failed at the very end there. That is why I call it a buggy prototype. It fails left and right. <laughs> background. Why am I doing this? I do love Duolingo. I'm using it for Spanish, Arabic, Russian, Japanese. All great, really good content, really cool languages, and it makes it fun. It's like a game. Recently, I started a new streak. I was getting a little competitive with my dad, and I promised myself I wouldn't get that into it. But I did. And I noticed that I was lacking a few badges. One of them was the Diamond League. I'm super busy right now in my personal life and my work life, so I really don't have time to spend hours on Duolingo, so my solution to that problem was to spend hours automating that problem, which didn't really solve anything. And at the end of the day, I never even got it to work, but it looks pretty cool, so I figured I'd show it to you. And just so you know, I actually had to grind out that Diamond League badge manually. But I had fun trying to solve this problem. So you might be asking yourself, how the heck is it learning new answers? How does it obtain this knowledge? And the answer is pretty unimpressive. If you launch, you'll see here, we're gonna launch it again, and I'm going to run a lesson where it doesn't know all the answers yet. And we will go into a Spanish lesson. It's definitely not as good at Spanish. And we'll come up and it'll have an answer that it doesn't know. And on the left there in the terminal window, you'll see that it's asking you to enter the answer. So really it's not learning anything, it's just remembering. But it gives you the same options that you have on the Firefox screen in the terminal, you enter it and then it saves it in its little brain text file where it associates phrases. So phrase one, phrase two, um, it doesn't matter which one is which as far as Spanish or English or Arabic or English, as long as they're matched together. It's just associating them kind of like a hash table or, or what have you, but it's all in a text file, a CSV file. That's really it for learning. And one thing to note, one of the challenges I had for the Arabic side is Arabic has beginning, middle, and end characters that are, they make the same sound, it's the same character, but it's written differently. And it turns out it has a different Unicode value. So it looks like a different character. So I had to figure out a way to convert those so that it recognizes, hey, this is logically the same character. And there's actually a helper function in Python in the Unicode data package that I used. So that was really, really a good find. Uh, Stack Overflow, of course, helped me out with that. So here you can see an excerpt from the brain file. Um, it's really just a list of phrases, and then I also noted what language it was and what lesson it was on. I never really used that information, but I thought it would be helpful at some point in the future. So what's the tech that's making this happen? How can you do this? Because I'm not releasing the source code yet. Maybe someday. Let me know if you're interested. Uh, but for now, this is my, my little secret. And for you to go find out, <laughs> and we did use Selenium, and I was using Python and Gecko driver. You can also use Chrome driver. And the first two we already kind of talked about. The third one, Gecko driver, is a special program that allows you to automate the Firefox browser. And obviously, Chrome driver is the same thing for Chrome. 
and that's what allows you to pop open that Firefox window and have it clicking buttons and finding things in the DOM without your input. I'll also give a shout out to our other video page keys, Selenium in 90 seconds or less, and that's a great way to get started. So watch that video, try out the steps in that video, see if you have any issues, and once you have Selenium up and running, you can launch that browser window, you're set. You're ready to go try something like this yourself. So let me know how it goes for you, and if you have any issues or questions, I'd be happy to help. And thanks for watching. That's it for this video.